of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, for always without fail, allowing us to be in His holy presence through His grace and mercy, sharing His word, which is the truth and the life-giving, and there is no other truth but Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Amen. I pray those who are with us in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming that you're always in good health and in good spirit in Jesus' mighty name, amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 119, verses 113 to 128 inclusive. I hate the double-minded, but I love your law. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of my God. Uphold me according to your word, that I may live, and do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Hold me up, and I shall be safe, and I shall observe your statutes continually. You reject all those who stray from your statutes, for their deceit is falsehood. You put away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. I have done justice and righteousness. Do not leave me to my oppressors. Be surety for your servant for good. Do not let the proud oppress me. My eyes fail from seeking your salvation and your righteous word. Deal with your servant according to your mercy and teach me your statutes. I am your servant. Give me understanding that I may know your testimonies. It is time for you to act, O Lord, for they have regarded your law as void. Therefore, I love your commandments more than gold. Yes, more than fine gold. Therefore, all your precepts concerning all things I consider to be right. I hate every false way. Amen. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Well, we thank our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, always and forever. He is the only way, the truth, and the life, and there is no one but Him. The unchanging, the everlasting King of kings and Lord of lords. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be in your holy presence and in your holy church, sharing your word with every soul that is willing to listen to you, Lord. Um, before we go any further, I'd just like to say, um, please do excuse me. <clears throat> I'm extremely tired today. My throat is finito gone. I'm doing my best. So you need to pray for me, for the Lord to soothe the throat by the love of his heavenly Father and the power of the Holy Spirit and make it smooth as and powerful more than ever. For the Lord's glory, amen. All right, so now we're going to ask our daughter in Christ, ja uh, Jacqueline, to start this evening with this church hymn. Jacqueline. Hi. 
hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure, Lord, you are my friend and king, anointed word, most holy. So today we are, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we will be finishing chapter 19. So we'll be reading from the book of Revelation, chapter 19, and verses 17 to 21, inclusive, and that is the end of the chapter. Here we go. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather together for the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth and their armies, gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse, and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword, with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh 
and all glory be to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, forever and ever. Amen. Okay, last week, as we are journeying through chapter 19, and we said chapter 19, we see a different woman where she is the bride of this Lamb who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and that woman is the church. And we saw that there was two suppers. One was the marriage supper of the Lamb, and the other one is the supper of the great God, which is our topic today. And we said that the supper of the, uh, the marriage supper of the Lamb, uh, all, the, all those people who were invited to that marriage or that wedding, they are the Old Testament people, and the New Testament church is the bride herself. But the entire Old Testament church are the invitees to the marriage supper of the Lamb. We saw also that there were three names to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Three names, we see that in Revelation 19, verse 12, verse 13, and verse 16. It's not on the screen. It's verse 12, 13, and 16. We read in verse 12, we see that it says, His eyes were like a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. He had a name written that no one knew except himself. Verse 13, he was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And verse 16, and he has on his robe and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Three different names. One, a name not known except to him. The other one, the name is the Word of God. And the other one, he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. A name not known except to him that is in heaven. It is a name revealed in heaven, and only those who are in heaven know this name. We on earth, still the name is not revealed to us. And that is actually referring to his divinity prior to his incarnation. The Lord Jesus, the Logos, uh, in his divinity prior to becoming the, a human being and coming to earth. That name is to do with the divine side of him. It is not known except to him. And then he is known as the Word of God. This is the church on earth. We came to know him as the Logos. John, the gospel writer, says in John 1.1, 1, 1, In the beginning was the Logos, the Word, and the Logos was with God, and the Logos, the Word, was God himself. So to the Christian world, Jesus Christ was revealed as the Word of God. And then on his second coming, now the Word of God is his first coming. That name was revealed to those who accepted him as Lord and Savior on his first coming as the Word of God. And the Word of God in his first coming, what was that word? Mercy. Mercy. He came with the Word healing every soul that received the Word. The blind saw, the crippled and paralyzed stood and walked they demented were healed the word was all mercy forgave sins healed the sick the lepers all kind of miracles and wonders he did because the word of god in his first coming was all mercy but in his second coming which we are reading now in his second coming he will come totally different to the first coming and who is going to acknowledge him as the king of all kings and the lord of all lords the entire world not the church the entire world why because we will read after verse 16 that this king of all kings and lord of all lords he will gather all the kings of the earth to judge them 
If he was not the king of all kings, he wouldn't have had that authority to bring kings of the earth to be judged. So the world will confess and acknowledge that he is the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. A, known only, a name only known to him that is in heaven to do with his divinity. His name is the word of God. That is his first coming. The church received him and came to know him as the logos, the word. And the king of all kings and lord of all lords and on his second coming, every knee will bow before him and every tongue will confess that he is the I am, the king of all kings and lord of all lords. Verse 17. Then I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather together for the supper of the great God. I saw an angel standing in the sun, S-U-N. In the first coming of the Lord Jesus, there was an angel sent before him, not standing in the sun. In the Lord's first coming, there was an angel sent before him. We read this in the prophecy of Malachi. Malachi is the last prophet of the Old Testament. When we go to chapter 4, which is, May, which is only four chapters, the, bo the book of Malachi, chapter 4, verses 5 to 6, it reads the following. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. I will send what? I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great day. Elijah came prior when the Lord's first coming was about to come. And that Elijah was John the Baptist. And the Lord Jesus spoke about John the Baptist and said, He is coming with the spirit of Elijah. Some people misunderstood this and said that Elijah is now John the Baptist. Like the spirit of Elijah is reincarnated in John the Baptist. In Christianity, there is no reincarnation. Get this out of your minds, your hearts, your belief system. Okay? This is in the pantheistic beliefs, Hinduism, Buddhism. Christianity does, will never accept reincarnation. The spirit belongs to this person. It will belong to that person forever. There is no reincarnation. But John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah, meaning what Elijah did, exactly John the Baptist did also. Elijah faced the kings of the earth and the rulers and those who are of big calibers and told them in their faces, what you do is wrong. And John the Baptist did exactly the same way and prepared the way for the logos, for the word of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, to come and for the path to be paved before the Lord Jesus. So John the Baptist was an angel. Now in the Greek word angelos, which is angel, literally transliterates into a messenger. The word angel means messenger in Greek. Angelos means messenger. So a messenger is someone that has been sent by someone else. So the first coming of the Lord, the angel went forth before the Lord Jesus. But in the second coming, John the Beloved sees the angel standing in the sun. Whoa. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. Since this is talking about the second coming of the Messiah, what does the sun represent here? The Antichrist. 
the Antichrist. Actually, before I go any further, is it cold? There must be me. I'm getting old. All right. The sun here represents the Antichrist. Why? Because the Lord is coming to judge the world. You know, when a worldly figure becomes famous, what do they refer to this person that has become fam famous in the world? They will refer to that person as he's a star. Or if they go a little bit bigger, a superstar. Don't they say that? Hollywood, they've got plenty of stars and superstars. When someone is very famous. Now, if someone is very famous, is a star, what do you say when someone rules the whole world? He's no longer a star, he's the sun. Because the sun gives the light to the star. Yes? So when someone is ruling the world, he's not a star, he's not a superstar, he is the sun, the greatest of all. Because the stars, without the sun, you don't see. He saw this angel standing in the sun, meaning the angel is actually challenging the Antichrist. He's standing in his way. Why? Because just like the Lord's first coming was preceded by an angel, John the Baptist, so as in his second coming, there will come an angel proceeding before him. And this angel will fight the Antichrist to say the Lord is coming to crush him once and for all. Now he was standing in the sun. And this angel cried out with a loud voice saying to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather together for the supper of the great God. Last week we spoke about the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now that's a beautiful occasion. Whenever you go to weddings, beautiful. That's a happy occasion. Everybody's eating, talking, laughing, dancing. And the invitees, females, are dressed up in, a in an outfit much more expensive than the bride. <laughs> and the poor husband has gone broke because he just bought that dress for four or five thousand dollars. And if he did not buy it, he would have stayed at his mom's place all week long. So now... The, the marriage supper of the Lamb is different. This is the supper of the great God. Every time you see the word God written, put next to it, judge. Yes? Every time you see the word God written, put next to it, judge. Jesus Christ, mercy before judgment. So this is the great, this is the supper of the great judge, the great God. He said to all the birds that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather together for the supper of the great God. The angel is saying to the birds, tonight you're going to eat like there is no tomorrow. Dig into it, baby. So what are they going to eat, these birds? Look at this, verse 18. That you may eat the flesh of kings, the flesh of captains, the flesh of mighty men, the flesh of horses and of those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great. Meaning, you will eat everyone who rejected Jesus Christ of Nazareth when he comes back on his second return. Destroy every thing that exists on earth. We need to understand this. Please let, I need your attention. God is love. 
And God is justice. He's just. And the first coming of the Lord Jesus, why did the Lord come? He came to do one thing, to fulfill the will of his heavenly father. No one else, nothing else. He came to do one thing, to please his daddy, his heavenly father. So on the first coming, he came sent by love. And because he was sent by love, he came to be the mercy of God for the entire human race, for the entire world. He accepted everyone and anyone who came and said, Lord, forgive me. I need you. I want you to be my Lord, my savior. Whether that person was the greatest sinners ever to exist on the face of this planet, the Lord Jesus came to bring back what was lost. He did not come to judge, but to show mercy and save. So the first coming was for salvation and redemption. This is why the Lord came very humble, very quiet. The first coming, he came as the lamb of God. The lamb is very humble, very cute, very quiet. The shepherd says to the lamb, stop, stops, walk, walks, be quiet, goes quiet. Say ma, says ma. Whatever the shepherd says, the lamb follows. Why the Lord was the lamb in the first coming? Because he came to save, not to judge. It's not that he is not capable of wiping Caiaphas. It's not that he was not capable of wiping Augustus Caesar and the entire Roman Empire. No, but he's, he came not to destroy, but to save and bring back what was lost. That's why he came as the lamb. Just like God is love, he sent forth his beloved and begotten son, only begotten son, to be the savior and the redeemer of the world. Just like there was a time for the Lord Jesus to come to save the world, so as there will be a time for the Lord to come back to fulfill God's justice. So in the first coming was love, the second coming is going to be justice. And when it comes to justice, you're talking about law. The law has no mercy. You break the law, the law will break you. This is why the Lord's second coming will no longer be the lamb, the calm, quiet, and cute. No, he'll be the lion, roaring lion, and fire going forth before him and devouring everything in his path. This quiet Jesus, this calm Jesus, no longer will be on the second coming. So let me say to Satan and those who worship Satan, if you think that Satan is your God, if you think that Satan is the most powerful thing, let me tell you, Satan, when the Lord comes again, he won't even reach the level of a little mouse before the almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And let me see the super elites, what they're going to do. What are you going to do when Jesus comes for you? <laughs> People think they rule. People think they are free whatever they do. It is a deceitful statement by the serpent Satan. No one is free. No one. No one. If we just see a glimpse of Jesus Christ of Nazareth in his glory, then you'll understand no one is free. If any human being, I'm not talking about Christians now, I'm talking to all humanity. If any human being think that Jesus Christ does not exist, you're mistaken. If any human being thinks that Jesus Christ is not God, you are mistaken. Satan 
has deceived, deceived you. In the next life, the only one you will see is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This, by the way, has got nothing to do with Christians. There are so many Christians that have no idea who Jesus Christ is. They have no idea. Just they were born in a Christian family. They were baptized when they were babies. And they are they're all they know they're Christians. What do you know about Jesus? Nothing. Nothing. Big deal, you're a Christian. If you don't come to know the Lord one on one, in person, intimate relationship with the Lord, your Christian name means nothing. It will not save you, it will not get you to heaven. What gets you to heaven when you build that relationship with Jesus Christ and come to know Him? Come to know Him. The Lord is not a duty. The Lord is not a task I fulfill. The Lord is not just a talk I give. The Lord is not a song I sing. The Lord is life. You need to live Him. Live Him. Live Him. Live Him. Just like there was a time the Lord came with love and mercy, there will definitely be a time the Lord will come, but with God's judgment. And when He comes to judge, you will not see Him being Mr. Nice Guy anymore. He won't even let you talk. He won't even let you breathe. He will wipe everything before Him. Oh, He is awesome. If some people think Satan is scary, frightening, you know, he's powerful. Satan is nothing. Believe you me, he's nothing. Boo. And he's gone. With a boo. You make the sign of the Holy Cross, it will burn him. Burn him. Burn him. Burn him. Who can stand? before the awesomeness of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. No one. John the Beloved, the one who used to put his head on the chest of Jesus. You ask John, when you put your head on the Lord's chest, what did you hear? He would say, I heard his heartbeat. The only disciple that heard the heartbeat of Jesus Christ was John the Beloved. So you were this close? So you put your head on his chest to hear the heartbeat and you were not afraid of him? He said, no. He's my oldest brother. He's, he's a father figure to me. He's everything to me. I believe and I know he loves me beyond measures. John, the one who put his head on the Lord's breast, chest, on earth, he saw him in heaven but he saw him in his glory. He said, I fell on the ground as if I were dead. John, what happened? It's the same Jesus. He said, no, 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 it's not. His eyes are a flame of fire. His feet are copper standing on fire and burning the fire. The fire was not burning him. He was burning the fire. And his voice was as uh, like many waters. I got so scared, so frightened, I fell as if I were dead. Wow. Because John, the first coming, you saw him as the lamb. But in glory, he is the lion. What is the lion? King, the king of all kings and lord of all lords. And what does the, what does the king do when he comes? He judges. He judges. So now... This angel said to the birds of heaven, eat everything, kings, flesh of captains, flesh of mighty men, flesh of horses, and those who sit on them, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, both small and great, eat them all. The second coming, people who will remain on earth would be 100% godless, godless. 
Well, we've been noticing in recent times, people are becoming more godless as we go. But I must say one thing. We thank the Lord. It's still not the end as yet. Because I personally can see so many people interested in the Lord and are coming back to the Lord. And let me tell you the good news. All glory to the holy and mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth forever and ever and ever. The majority of these people are young men and women. Hallelujah, man. Amen. Yes, yes. Yep. And let me say this to Andrew Tate. If you think that Christians are coward, you are mistaken. Christ is the only revolutionist ever to exist. No human being ever was able to change the whole world with a word. Superpowers came with weapons and great force. They could not change nothing. Jesus, no weapon, no knife, no sword, nothing, absolutely nothing. He changed the whole world with the word. There is no one greater than Jesus Christ of Nazareth ever to exist on the face of this planet. I belong to that Jesus. I fear no one and I fear nothing. Understand? I can't stand it when they talk about my Jesus like that. If the Christians are coward, Christ is the glory. And he's the warrior. So you better take that back, Mr. Andrew Tate. But there's one thing you have misunderstood. Let me tell you. And those who have, who share the same mindset like you. Jesus Christ is love. He came on his first coming as mercy. See, you need to understand one thing about love. Love is the most powerful thing ever to exist. And it is the most, the, the weakest thing also ever to exist at the same time. Love is the most powerful and the weakest at the same time. Why? Because when you love someone from the heart, you will do anything and everything for that someone. If that love is received as weakness, then it's the ignorance of the other party, not the one who loves. But let me tell you, when the time comes, love can be also very, very powerful. Because love moves mountains. You see, you cannot change the heart of a person using force. You cannot change the mind of a person using the sword and threatening to beheading people. The only way you can change a heart of a man or a woman is when you show them and give them love, not power. Don't ever misunderstand what Jesus is all about. Don't ever. And this goes to all the Christians. To all the Christians. Eat everything. Look, the Lord took me to heaven. Yeah, I want, I want Andrew Tate to hear this. Yes, and everyone like Andrew Tate. Let me tell you this, all of you, everyone. The Lord, no one else, took me to heaven. Let me tell you, there is no Muhammad. There is no Buddha. There is no Krishna. There is no one. Only one. Jesus. Why? Because he is the only one. There is no one else but him. He is God revealed in the flesh. God revealed in the flesh. No one else. No one else. This is not judgment. This is not attack. This is not discrimination. Believe you me, I love everyone. Believe you, and if you don't want to believe, it's up to you. It doesn't matter. But I love you. 
because my Jesus taught me to love everyone. Let me tell you this, you will never ever find anyone in heaven except Jesus Christ. Buddhists, stop chasing Buddha. I can assure you, you can say Buddha was a nice man. You can put as many oranges and apple in front of him. That will get you nowhere. Let me tell you, you can follow the, your three million gods, Hindus. They'll get you nowhere. You can follow Muhammad, it'll get you nowhere. The only one that truly is who he is, is Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And this has got nothing to do with Christians or anyone else. It's got to do with the truth. This is the truth. Jesus Christ is God, the creator of everyone and everything visible and invisible. That's all I saw in heaven, him. I didn't see anyone else. Why would I make up a story like this? You know what, this story could get me into trouble, if anything, really. People might not like what they hear. I'm not making it up. Mr. Andrew Tate, I'll pray for you, my dear friend, to come back to the Lord Jesus because you made a big mistake by denying your Lord. The biggest mistake ever you've made in your life. And I pray the Lord touches your heart and bring you back to the truth. For there is no other truth but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let me tell you, heaven is about the Lord Jesus. No one else. Oh my goodness. Please ask the Lord Jesus to come. Search for the Lord. Christians, stop walking away from the Lord Jesus for the sake of the filth of this world. Stop, stop walking away from the Lord. Don't sell the Lord for this little white powder. Don't sell the Lord for having fun in the streets and the alleys of this dark world. Stop, I beg you stop. It's only the Lord, no one else. Love sometimes is blunt because truth hurts a lot of times. If you love someone from the heart, you need to tell them the truth. Stop beating around the bush. Stop trying to make it look it's okay when it's not okay. When it's not okay, just say it. It's not okay. Why are you going around? Why are you trying to, to make it look nice? Trying to fix it. Enough. Speak things as they are. Don't falsify nothing. Just to please people. No. In this, you are not doing no one a favor. Neither yourself nor anyone. It's not about pleasing people. It's about speaking the truth to people. And the truth is, Jesus Christ is God. And to the atheist scientist, stop chasing the ape. He is not your grandfather, okay? We came from a gorilla. That's an insult, man. Like this guy spent his entire life studying. He studied very hard. I'll give it to him. But he ended up being an ignorant. After 30, 40 years of studies, he is an ignorant person. Over 13.5 billion years ago. I just wonder, was he there? Or his auntie, uncle, grandfather? Which one? 13.5. Get a life, man. He will come as the judge. The angel said to the birds that fly in heaven, eat everything. Verse 19. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Who sat on the horse last week? The Lord Jesus. But you see today, doesn't mention the white horse. Last week it was the white horse. 
but today it's just the horse, not white. The word white is not mentioned. Why? Because white, we said, represents righteousness, represents peace, represents calmness and life. But this time it's a horse, and the horse here represents battle. When you sit on the horse, you're ready to go into war. And the Lord is, is coming on his second coming, so he's ready to go out to war. He's no longer the lamb, he's the lion, the king of all kings. So he sat on the horse. But who got together? The beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse, i.e. the Lord Jesus, and against his army. If you look at the entire world, all they're doing is fighting against the Lord Jesus. No one else. You want to build a church, all hell breaks loose. Go build anything else, it's okay, you got the approval. Build a brothel, you'll get it on the spot. You'll get it on the spot and in a residential area. And I should close every council. But you come to build a church, oh my, 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 my. Every man and his dog, even the dog becomes evil. <laughs> not your chair, not your chair, not your chair. What's wrong? You mention the name Jesus, they all become demonic. Yeah, they attack. You mention any other name, yeah, no, no problem. Oh, we feel sorry for them. You know, we need to love them and we need to call for them. The moment you say I'm a Christian, oh, get him out of here. Get him out of here. Look at the Christian countries. In a way, I agree with Andrew Tate when he said Christians are cowards. Yes, I agree with you. But Christ is not, my dear friend. You're forgetting, you're forgetting the core of everything. Don't judge Christianity based on Christians. Judge Christianity based on the author, the owner, Jesus. Let me see what you're going to do, Andrew Tate. Bring me your prophet and I bring you my Jesus. And let you, let's sit and talk. When you're talking about religion, talk about the leaders. Not the followers. How did your prophet live and how did my Jesus live? Huh. It, I don't need to show you the Bible. Read your Quran. It tells you how Jesus lived. Even though that Jesus in the Quran is not the Jesus of the Bible. Two different people. But even in the Quran, Jesus Christ, is poo, he's glorified. He's glorified. In fact, there are things mentioned in the Quran about Isa, not even the Bible mentions. It says that he spoke while he was in the cradle. The Bible didn't say Jesus spoke while he was in the cradle. It says that he created out of the mud, clay, birds, and he blew into them and the birds became alive and flew away. Who creates out of mud birds and give life to it? Isn't it God? Enormous things sp spoken about Isa. And he went up alive, living. And he's going to come back to judge the dead and the living. Man, amazing. He lived the life of holiness, my dear friend. Perfect life. Even his birth, virginal birth. Where do you find a figure like that? Where are you going to find someone like Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Where? Seek the truth. Don't seek power. Don't seek threatening. Don't seek the sword. Let the sword be the word of truth and love. Truth and love.
But if the Christians are cowards because they sold their master, that's why they're cowards. Nothing to do with the master Jesus. Jesus is always the warrior. If you hold on to him, you trust in him, you believe in him, you receive power from him. But you walk away from him, of course you'll be afraid. When Satan comes, you run for your life. Oh, I'm afraid of Satan. They're coming after me. Get a life. Let's step on Satan in Jesus' mighty name. Step on Satan. Don't ever say when you get the when you get sick. Don't ever say I got the COVID. Please get rid of this stupid name. Get rid of the stupid name. There is no COVID. There is no Corona. No Toyota. Well, there is Lexus, but there is no Corona. They used to have Toyota Corona before, but then they changed to Toyota Camry, and now Lexus is top of the range. So they can have the Corona the visor and everything else and stick it on their forehead. The Lord Jesus is the only one. I love everyone, but I will never ever deny my sweetheart Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He is the only one that has created everything and everyone that is visible and invisible. When you go to heaven and see him in his glory, <sighs> I'll get you guys a fish burger and a chocolate Sunday after Sunday resurrection, according to the old Julian calendar, which is the Orthodox. 5th of May this year. <laughs> <laughs> In a way, some of the Orthodox are saying, I wish I was a Catholic because I would have been eating steak now, man, a long time ago. <laughs> we need to unite the, the resurrection date. Christians, shame. Shame on all of us. I'm not saying to the Catholic to be Orthodox. I'm not saying to the Orthodox to be Catholic. I'm not saying to, for anyone to change anything. All I'm saying, do you love the Lord Jesus? Then if you do, then shame on you if you don't unite the, the Sunday resurrection date. Shame on you. Shame on you. You see, in this, Christians are cowards. I'm saying it to the popes, to the patriarchs of every church, the highest rank. Until when are you going to do this to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Unite the Sunday resurrection day. Unite the Sunday resurrection day. This has got nothing to do with theology. Please. Canon laws, leave them to yourselves, yeah? It's a date. Why is it so hard? Why is it so hard? I've always said this. Why is it so hard for all the Orthodox to celebrate the birth of the Lord with the Catholic Church, with the West? And why is it so hard for the Catholic Church to celebrate Sunday resurrection with the Orthodox, the East? Why is it so hard? Meet halfway. I celebrate the birth with you, you, you celebrate the resurrection with me. End of story. Very simple. Very simple. Why is it so hard? Then shame on all of us. Yeah? Shame on all of us. Well, God willing, we're going for the... Uh, well, I think I'm going to be headed in, the, in one of the airports. I don't know. We're going on the Sunday um, uh, resurrection. We're going to be in Holy Land, Jerusalem. So please pray for the entire group. Yes, yes. Jesus is the only one. There's no one else. That's the truth. When, when the spirit leaves the body, whether you are Christian, not Christian, you'll understand, you'll know this. You will know this 100%. When the spirit leaves the body, you will know that it's only Jesus. There's no one else. No one else. So Christians, wake up to yourselves.
And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. The beast, well, the beast was in Revelation chapter 13. The one that came out of the sea that had seven heads and ten horns and on those horns there was ten crowns. And we spoke about the beast. What is the beast? The beast is a governmental system that tries to enslave every human being on the face of this planet and bring them and subject them to this one governmental system. That's the beast. It is an empire without the rule of God. Godless empire. That is the beast. One world order. I don't know if you've heard of this, yes? One world order. So the one world order, they're gathering together with all the kings of the earth. That's why in verse 16, his name is the king of all kings and the Lord of all lords. Because if there are kings on earth, while well, Jesus Christ is the king to every king. He rules over every leader in the world. Not the church only, but even the world. So who put Biden in the White House? Not the elites that played with the votes. No, it was the Lord. You see, they thought they did whatever they wanted and got away with it. They're not realizing it is the Lord who puts kings and who takes them as well. Oh. So who do we have here? Oh, Albanese. Yes, I forgot. <laughs> Poor Australia. What is Australia going to do, man? You got like China from that. You got Indonesia over here. They'll eat Australia alive. So they're hanging on to America. So that's why when America sneezes, Australia gets the flu. Oh, sorry, COVID. <laughs> you need the Lord. You, any country, any nation introduces laws that are offensive to Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the head of that nation will be brought down to the ground by Jesus Christ of Nazareth himself, Australia. So the prime minister walks in the streets and says to these colors, this is the new Australia. You have no idea what the Lord is going to do to you and to your Australia. Do you think it's easy? You introduce laws that offend God, who is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and you think you can get away with it? Not, no America, no nation can protect Australia from the hands of the Lord Jesus. The protector is the Lord, Mr. Albanese. The provider is the Lord Jesus, Mr. Albanese, not America, not allies here and there. And this goes the same to America. I don't know, I'm, I'm on fire today. <laughs> you walk away from the Lord Jesus, you'll become the laughter of all nations. The laughter. The laughter. You come back to the Lord Jesus, even if you are surrounded by vicious wolves, nothing will harm you. Nothing. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you, my Lord Jesus, who is the beginning of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for the Lord is my shepherd. His staff and rod, they comfort me for the Lord is my shepherd. He has prepared a table before my enemies for the Lord is my shepherd. Nothing harms me for the Lord is my shepherd. Nothing. So who's waging the war against the Lord Jesus who sits on that horse and his army? The beast and the kings of the earth. My goodness. 
The kings of the earth, they gather together in this place called the United Nations. These are the kings of the earth. United Nation is against the Lord Jesus, period. United Nations is against the Lord Jesus. Who's behind this? The beast. What is the beast? Governmental system. One system for everyone to follow. And in Revelation 13, it says if you are not part of the system, you cannot buy, sell, you cannot get married, you cannot do anything. Everything becomes the system. You know, gradually, paper money is going to disappear. Have you noticed how they are readapting people to the new way of living? Before, before even, oh, no, sorry, before everyone had cash money with them because everything was paper, cash. Now, if you take out cash, they laugh at you. And so, you're still living in the Stone Age, and that's old fashioned. What cash? Tap. Chick -chick. Chick -chick. Chick -chick. It's all tapping. The next tap will be thanks to Elon Musk, it'll be in the head. <laughs> oh, as the book of Revelation says, either the head or the, the arm. Yeah, see how the, how the word of the Lord Jesus coming alive? Please wake up. Anybody home? No other book spoke so perfectly as the Holy Bible has spoken. No other book. Either on the forehead or in the arm. Elon Musk wants to put in the brain. I think, was, was that guy, Bill Gates? Where is he now? Is he in Fairfield? <laughs> On the arm. So next time you don't need to do anything. You just walk. It'll be traffic lights. A walking traffic light. When the cash goes, <laughs> you can laugh at this. I really feel bad for those who work <laughs> with cash money <laughs> no more cash <laughs> but I'm sure the Middle Eastern men they always come up with ideas you can't win with the Middle Eastern uh, they will outsmart the system and you'll see a way of getting a few chips from this account and a few chips from that other account so the system will bring everyone and force them to live there Everything is monitored wherever you go. I don't know if I should say this, but have you noticed on your iPhone there is uh, on one of these I, 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 icons, whatever it's got, a, like a health thing, a heart? Yeah? Do you know what that is? They're going to say to you, like, uh, put it on because when you're walking, it, it monitors your heart rate and it tells you about the, how the body is functioning. It's not. Anyway, I'll talk about it later on. Don't want to scare you. Don't, don't ever activate it. They're evildoers. Another thing, you know with this 5G thing? Is it about this? These two cars? Okay. There's somebody wants to leave. Okay. So give us one second. Sorry, guys. There's a car blocking away. It, uh, the number plate, it is BMY40X, uh, blocking, um, blocking a car. The number plate is BMY40X. Do we know what, car, what car, type of car it is? BM, BMY40X. <clears throat> and there is another one which they've left their lights on. It's an Audi. P, a DPC 50U, I think. The lights are on. It's an Audi. DPC 50U 
and the lights are on. But the BMY 40X is blocking the way, if you don't mind. Thank you so much. God bless. So they're trying. They're trying because it is written, everything is biblical, everything is going to be fulfilled. What the Lord has saw and has foretold. Because the Lord is God. He knows everything before it really takes place and happens. That's why he documented it. To pre-warn us of what is coming up. Therefore, be prepared, be ready, my children. Be prepared, prepared, my son, my daughter. Don't fall into the traps of Satan and follow the world and follow the pattern of the world. Why are you chasing the world? This is not fun. It's not a joke. It's not a holiday. Your life is not a joke. Look after your spirit. Look after your spirit. It's not a joke. So the, bee, the beast and the kings of the earth are gathered to, get, uh, to make war against the Lord Jesus. Well, isn't that, isn't that happening? Isn't that happening? My goodness. They attacked every Christian country. America, they took the Bibles out of schools. They introduced laws against the Lord Jesus. Australia, Canada. Oh my goodness. Canada. Europe. So many churches in Europe are now museums, empty places and probably being turned into restaurants and God knows what else. In Europe, the biggest number where Christians are walking away from Christ is Europe, followed by Canada, followed now in recent times by America and Australia as well. Christian countries have walked away from the Lord. Why? Because the beast and the kings of the earth are gathering together to make war with the Lord Jesus and his army. They're not interested in the Lord Jesus anymore. Not interested. But my beloved, let me tell you this. Even if they kill me for the sake of the Lord, please be my guest. Please be my guest. Don't ever sell your Lord Jesus. Don't ever walk away from your Lord. Don't ever. Don't ever walk away from the Lord. Don't ever, my beloved. My throat has been extremely tired. Um, but I couldn't not come today because I love you so much. But believe me, I'm extremely tired. Then the beast was captured, verse 20. And with him the false prophet who worked signs in his presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. The beast and the false prophet, both of them were captured by the Lord Jesus and they were cast alive into that river of fire. to the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Both of them were cast. The beast and the false prophet. Well, we saw that in Revelation chapter 13. The false prophet came out of the land. The beast came out of the sea. Seven heads, ten horns, and ten crowns. But the false prophet looked like a ram from outside with two horns. And we spoke about this in depth when we were talking about Revelation 13. I don't want to repeat what we spoke of. But both of them were cast into the lake of fire. Both of them by the Lord Jesus.
Satan and his foul spirits, now they are in Hades. Those who go and depart from the Lord, they will go to hell. The foul spirits are in Hades. Angels are in heaven. The people that are not going to make it to heaven, they're going to go to hell. And those who are going to make it to be with the Lord, they are going to paradise. So there are two groups of people. Two of them were cast alive into the lake of fire. The beast and the false prophet. Why these two? Because there is Elijah and Enoch, the two that are still alive that went to heaven. Two went up to heaven and two will be cast into the lake of fire. Elijah and Enoch beast and false prophet yes so foul spirits hades people that leave this world that belong to satan go to hell but those who belong to jesus christ they'll go to paradise angels are in heaven people with the lord are in paradise foul spirits are in hades people that are going to go with satan are going to end up in hell and the second coming those foul spirits in hades and those souls in hell, they'll be both taken and cast into the lake of fire once and for all. And those angels in heaven and those souls who are in paradise on the second coming, they'll be taken into the Father's house where the Lord has been there for the last 2,024 years. Now, Verse 21, and the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. Those who worship Satan will end up in hell and eventually in the lake of fire along with the beast and the false prophet. But everyone else that did not worship Satan, nor accepted Jesus Christ of Nazareth, they'll be killed by the sword that came out of the mouth of the Lord. Meaning, the sword is his word, and his word is the judgment. They will be judged by the Lord himself, and the birds of the sky will be filled with their flesh. Eh? In other words, they will all be judged and end up dead for their, uh, forever and ever and ever. The only way for us to be saved is to receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The only way. The only way. Jesus is the only way, my beloved. Don't ever think Jesus is for the Christians only. No. He's for everyone. People who received Christ were called Christians. And whoever receives Christ will be called Christian. An atheist receives Christ, will be called Christian. A Muslim receives Christ, will be called Christian. A Buddhist, a Hindu, anyone and everyone who receives Christ will be called a Christian. We were not Christians. We received Christ, we became Christians. Christ came for every single human being. He loves everyone, he died for everyone, and he is willing to save everyone if we choose for him to do so. Our part is to let him in our life. Call him, say, Lord, I don't know you. Please let me get to know you more and more. I was born as an atheist. I don't know God. I don't believe in God. I never believed in God. But if you truly exist, I am calling you to come and reveal to me that you truly exist. I'm a Buddhist. I'm a Hindu. I'm a Muslim. I'm this. I'm that. I don't know. Show me the true God. Who are you? What is your name? Show me. His name is Jesus Christ. 
There is no other God, believe you me. I went to hell. Satan is ugly. You don't want to be there, trust me. Trust me, you don't want to be there. I'm not making it up. May the Lord strike me dead this moment. You could never, ever come across anyone as ugly, as poisonous, as hatred as Satan. He's real. Hell is real. But the Lord is the truth and heaven is the truth. Totally opposite. Ugliness, beauty. Darkness, light. Death, life filth holiness when you see satan it's the ugliest ever when you see jesus the son of man in his glory there is no words ever 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 that can could express explain illustrate the beauty of christ impossible he surpasses every language, every word to explain how awesome and beautiful he is. No, impossible, 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 impossible. My beloved Christians, and the whole world. Believe me, I love you. You can hate me, I still love you. You can refuse or reject what this bishop is saying. Doesn't matter, I love you, who cares? You know, when I, when I mention Muslims and Buddhists and Hindus, don't ever think that I don't, I'll, I'll, believe me, I love them. The Lord knows I love them. So it doesn't matter if you believe it or not. It really doesn't matter. As long as the Lord knows, that's what matters. I love the Muslims to death. I love the Buddhists to death. I love the Hindus to death. I love every human. The atheist, I love everyone. Even the LGBTQ, RSTUYZ. I love you guys. But let me tell you one thing. Let me tell you one thing. The truth can never change. I'm not attacking. I'm not discriminating. I'm not judging. I'm simply stating the truth. I have been in heaven and in hell personally personally not a dream not a vision not anything the lord the lord the lord himself the lord himself 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 i wish i could tell you i saw muhammad i wish in heaven i didn't I wish I could tell you I saw Buddha in heaven. Didn't. Krishna or the million, three million gods. None of them. None of them. There's only one. <laughs> the crown of glory. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And, and, and look at the Christians, man. Little kids, huh? Believe me, little kids playing in the street. This guy says I'm Catholic, and this guy says I'm Orthodox, and they fight. Mm. Ash on your head. Like when you see the Lord, you Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant, when you see the Lord, what name? Like what name? What name? What name? The problem, the throne, and this outfit changed us. Changed us. Where is the humility? Where is the love? Where is it? My dear friend, where is it? The glory is Christ's. 
The throne is for Christ to sit on. The place is for Christ. The church belongs to Christ. Everything belongs to Him. What Catholic, what Orthodox, please wake up. I don't have a watch, but the time is running out. I have an invisible one. The time is running out. The time is running out. Come back to the Lord Jesus, my daughter. Stop going out with your friends, wasting your time on absolute nonsense. My son, stop mixing with the wrong crowds, thinking this is manhood. It's not. A true man is the one who put his head under the feet of Jesus Christ. That is a true man. This is your muscles and your power, your strength. When you bow before the Lord Jesus, now this is a man and a true woman who makes herself beautiful for the Lord, no one else. Why do you need for the whole world to look at you and then make a judgment whether you are beautiful or not? Who gives one penny what the world thinks of you? As long as Christ sees you beautiful the hell with the world Christ my beloved daughter Christ Christ son be a man love the Lord the most beautiful thing any man can do for his family is when he leads that family and leads the way and show her his wife and the children even though I am the man and the head of this household I am the backbone of this family I am your strength I am your provider I am your power but watch wife look at your man look at your husband children look at your daddy daddy is going and now all this daddy big daddy now is putting his head and crying at the feet of the messiah seeking mercy guidance and begging the lord for forgiveness now this is a true daddy this is a true man And the woman, and the woman should be a school for her children, teaching them the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord. Now, the Lord, at the end of chapter 19, He will judge all those people that are left from that sword that which comes out of His mouth. And we said last time, see, in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, where the Lord says, I did not come to bring peace but the sword. Some people took it the wrong way and said, you see, even your Jesus Christians, He uses the sword. No, Habibi, no. No, Habib Albi, no. My sweetheart, no. Because Revelation chapter 19 and verse 21, it says, And the rest were killed with the sword which proceeded from the mouth. Not from the side. The sword of the Lord comes from the mouth. What comes from the mouth? The word. Words come out of your mouth, don't they? Like when you speak, does, do, do swords fly out of your mouth? Words. So when the Lord says in Matthew, I did not come to bring peace, but the sword, he meant the word. His word is sharper than a double-edged sword. And why double-edged? Because one edge cuts, the other edge heals. That's what the sword does. It cuts and heals. The knife needs to cut in order to heal where it's painful. 
That's the word of the Lord. It's a sword. You receive the word, accept the word, it will set you free. You reject the word, the word will cut you, will judge you. It's a sword. So the sword that comes out of his mouth is the word. It's his word. He will judge everyone with his word. And now he took the beast and the, and the false prophet. He cast them into that lake of fire. Chapter 20, he will come and take the dragon, the old serpent, which is the devil and Satan. And he will cast that Satan into that lake of fire. See, they are three. Satan, the dragon, the old serpent, then the beast, then the false prophet. It's the filthy trinity. Just like we believe in the holy trinity, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Well, we have the Father. Over there, the filthy trinity has the dragon. Satan is their father. And the Lord said it. He said, you are the sons of your father, the children of your father. Your father is the father of all lies, and he is the killer of mankind from the very beginning. He referred to their Satan as their father. So the dragon Satan is the father of all lies. The beast is their son. The system. What is the system? Brain. And what is the son of God? The logos, intellect, brain. And then you have the false prophet. The false prophet tells you false prophecies, false things to falsify the truth, to deceive you and lead you into perdition and destruction. But the Holy Spirit prophesies in the light to lead you to the Lord Jesus, the light of the world. You see how there is the Holy Trinity and the, whole, and the filthy Trinity? So what's happening in the world? All of this behind it is Satan, the dragon. Oh, Chinese, <laughs> the year of the dragon. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> what, are you, what are you chasing, my dear friend? <laughs> what dragon? We need to be very careful, very careful. No. Um, so chapter 20 will be, uh, this time will be Satan will be cast into the lake of fire, the dragon. We pray very soon. We pray very soon, my beloved. The world is gone. Hey, wa, ya. Don't believe in uh, climate change. That's another big lie. One guy from a different religion, I, which I won't mention, they had a gathering in this church. In a church. Not church, man. Not church. So uh, this guy stood up and he said, I'm going to teach you how the, the, the techniques of breathing in and out, like inhaling and exhaling, because if you don't know the te te techniques of it, you may exhale more carbon dioxide and you will contribute to the climate change problem. <laughs> I was going to say something, but I'll leave it. Yeah. So guys, next time when you inhale, please don't be too greedy. <laughs> and when you exhale, can you please do it in drips and wraps? Like a fish out of water. <laughs> you know, um, Satan is smart, but in an idiotic way. Yeah? Because what happened? Any creation loses the creator. No matter how smart they are, they become idiots. Idiotic behavior. So Satan is smart, but he's an idiot at the end of the day. So those who follow Satan, they're smart. But when they behave, you look at them and it's a laughable matter. Idiotic. 
Because they lack the wisdom of God. They lack it. Wisdom. Not knowledge. Wisdom. They lack the wisdom of the Lord. Be close to the Lord Jesus. That's all I can say. Be close to the Lord Jesus. Jacqueline, are we ready? Let's listen to this hymn.
I know I've come so far, but got so far to go. And with these brand new scars and this broken heart, it's hard to really know if there's a reason. If I love to see it, but I wanna believe it. So don't give up. Don't give up on me yet. Don't give up on me. The Lord never gives up on no one. When we give up, we see him right there waiting for us. When we walk away, he's always there beside us. When we drift away, he's always the faithful one awaiting for our return. No matter what we go through, and no matter what happens in our life, the Lord will never change. He loved us from the very beginning. He loves us and he will always love us no matter what. But one thing we need to do from our side, he's done his part, now it's up to us. He's done it and he said to his heavenly father, Father, it is finished. It's done. What you asked me to do, I've done it faithfully, loyally, till the very end with absolute perfection. Whoever comes now, Father, and knocks at your door of mercy. The door is open, Dad. Because I promised that I will do as you please. I will do as you will and as you wish. I have shed my blood, my precious blood on Calvary on the cross. For whoever knocks at the door of mercy, I am the door of mercy. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, my blood will wash you clean, make you whiter than snow, pure as God created you in the very beginning in the Garden of Eden. His image, His likeness, perfect. We need to come back to Jesus Christ of Nazareth and say, Lord, forgive me. I have sinned before you and heaven. And I'm not worthy to be called your son anymore. I'm asking you to forgive me. Take the blame yourself. Live up to it. Stand and face it. Don't blame anyone, including Satan. Don't. You see, when the time comes to talk about anything or anyone, we talk, but that doesn't mean we forget that I need to look at myself first and foremost. I need to come back to the Lord Jesus and I need to focus on myself. Stop blaming others for what you're doing or for what you've done. For a change, say, I blame no one, Lord. I point the finger at no one except myself. And you've heard this before from us whenever we point the finger at someone blaming them for what they have done we point one finger and there is three pointing towards us every time you judge one person once you're judging yourself three times moreover so you better watch out isn't it it is the case one finger to that person and three pointed at me. Say, Lord, Satan tried to make me fall. I know he tried, but I won't blame him because that's his job. That's his job. People, family members, friends, colleagues tried to hurt me. But there are people at the end of the day, what do you expect? No one is perfect. 
No one is a saint. No one is an angel, including you. Including you. So Lord, today I'm coming. I'm blaming no one but me. And the only finger that I'll be pointing today is at me. No one else. Lord, have mercy on me. I, the sinner. Forgive me, Lord. I need you, Lord. I can't live without you, Lord. I know I have upset you. I know I have hurt you. I know I have walked away from you. I know I have ignored you and displeased you. I know that I've broken your heart. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm confessing. I, I, I'm acknowledging everything. Lord, I'm begging you. Accept me one more time, Lord. Accept me one more time. If every single one of us focused on themselves only, heaven would have been on earth. There wouldn't have been any arguments. There wouldn't have been any fighting, quarreling, disagreements, divisions, none of that. If we had focused on ourselves, not others. Focus on yourself. Be, be preoccupied with yourself, no one else. Amen. Amen. However, Jesus will always remain the truth. Man, I love Jesus. He is the love of my life. Yes, I'm a sinner. Yes, I'm the weakest of all. Yes, I am a piece of dust. Yes, I'm the unworthy. The, the, the nothing of all nothings. Yes, but Lord, from head to toe, I'm a sinner. I, will, I know that. I acknowledge that. But Lord, I die for you, man. Now, man, that's in uh, 21st century terminology, man. <laughs> Imagine if the Lord Jesus came as a black American. Uh, sorry, I don't mean any, anything wrong in here. Like, I love the black Americans. They're stunning people. I, and I mean it. They're really stunning. And their faith moves mountains. Oh, if you want to learn from them, learn faith. The black Americans hold the Christian faith, not the whites. But imagine, like Jesus came as a black American. He would have been cool, bro. Yo, what's up, brother? Imagine like he says, hey, let me some skin, bro. What's up? What's up? What's up in the man? Hey, what's up? Hey, bro, what's up? Truly, I said to you, my man. <laughs> that would have been cool. But the Lord is the black American. Is the Mr. Mahatma Gandhi. He is the Indian. He is the Chinese. He is the Australian. He is the Canadian. He is, the, he is everyone. He is the creator of everyone. He is everyone. And everyone is the Lord. Just call the Lord. Be close to Him. I beg of you, be close to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I know you're tired. You've been here for too long. I just can't help it, man. <laughs> just runs in this Assyrian Middle Eastern. God, I'm Middle Eastern, baby. Habib Alba. What's up, brother? Love everyone. Pray for everyone. But speak the truth without hypocrisy, without reservation. Love and respect everyone, but speak the truth as it is. So if a non-Christian says, who is Jesus Christ for you? God, my creator, my savior, my redeemer. This is non-negotiable area. It's finished. It's non-negotiable. But if you ask me for my life as a Muslim, as a Hindu, as a Buddhist, I'll give you my life because I love you. 
But I will still say, till the last drop of my life, Jesus Christ is the only way. There's no one else. Amen? Amen. So, um, I'll be the next Prime Minister. All right, guys with the big muscles and the tattoos, get ready. Because one of you will be the interior minister, the other one the exterior. We'll sack all the cabinet. We'll sack every politician. I'm going to bring the guys from banks down, punch ball, Lakemba, baby. And Fairfield. <laughs> and Liverpool. <laughs> Liverpool. Yeah. yeah, they'll be the next, uh, <laughs> the next government. <laughs> Like imagine one of these ministers, you know, come out on TV and says, hey, listen guys, and now we're going to do this and that's it, okay? If you don't like it, tough luck. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. All right, a couple of announcements. Uh, and then we shall call it a day. Oh, uh, when was it Yesterday. Yesterday, yes? Yeah, yeah. Yesterday, I was a landscaper. By the way, if you need like a concrete, uh, anyone likes, you know, I'm jack of all trades. So we laid this lawn in front of the church. You've probably seen a few, you know, and then tapes and all that. That lawn is laid by yours truly. By the help of some beautiful people with us. But we laid the lawn. It looks stunning. Please don't step on it. <laughs> and don't drive your car on it, please. So if I could ask you, just maintain it. Look, this is the house of the Lord, and we want it also to be a little bit more presentable. Um, so it looks very nice now, and nice green. Before it was just a dry, dead desert, very just dirt. Now it's lush green, looks like an oasis, beautiful. So please, I beg you, it was only laid yesterday, so just watch your step. Don't, move, don't walk on that. And, and once, once it's okay, please don't park your cars there either. I know some of us that are parking them on the footpaths, you know, to, um, to sort of save you some traveling uh, sort of distance and all that. So please don't park there anymore. We just want to keep it well maintained and lush and green and beautiful. And I, I thank you for your understanding. Um, it took us one day to lay it all, man, but it was stunning. We brought some topsoil and then nice, what was the name of that lawn? Sawalta. Sawalta lawn. There you go. All the way from Windsor. It looks stunning. So yeah, if you need any landscape, actually I was working outside one day and this van stops. This beautiful Asian man. Oh, hello. I said, hello. I said, uh, he said, how much you do uh, for this? <laughs> so I'm announcing, I'm opening my own landscaping company. So if you want some landscaping to be done around the house, um, <clears throat> yes, I'm very expensive, but um, I, I do the job right. There you go. So please watch the lawn and uh, look after the church. I love you. Jesus loves you the most. Um, I don't know. What else should I say? Oh, by the way, our Food Angel uh, initiative, that program where we give hampers, you know, we asked you to vote. We have been chosen to be in the finalist. So... I believe we are being invited to go to a dinner in June. And like imagine if the prime minister was there and he sees me. I think he'll get a shock of his life. I say, Mr. Albanese, come here, mate. Yeah. Are they going to say, oh, not that TikTok. Oh, who's that bishop over there? That's dangerous. So we've been invited to go to this dinner in June, and they'll announce it there who's going to be the winner. So please pray for us so we'll be, we'll be the winners. Yes, so thank you. I like that, guys. All right, you're, you'll be the next ministers, okay, in my cabinet. Um, yeah, so wonderful. We've been invited. Um, the One Jesus International Conference, we've uh, announced it only about a week or so ago. <clears throat> this is taking place in 2025 by the grace of the Lord Jesus. It is open for everyone around the world. Uh, obviously, the number is limited. So you, you, you come, whoever comes, you know, try and come as soon as possible to guarantee a spot for yourself. 
One Jesus International Conference. It will take place on Thursday, the 28th of August to Monday, 1st of September. It will go for five days. If you are uh, 18 and over from Australia and all over the world, this conference is open to everyone around the world. Um, it will include accommodation, uh, meals, travel to all venues, divine liturgy, spiritual lectures, contemplative prayer service, spiritual touring and retreat. So we'll take people around this beautiful city of ours, Sydney, and show them the beautiful city, uh, city of Sydney, especially if you are coming for the first time to Australia. It'll be wonderful. So we'll have also some um, socializing together, like a beautiful time together in the love of Christ. There will be educational films and seminars and also fellowship with us here at Christ the Good Shepherd Church. So it's open for everyone around the world from the ages of 18 and over. And there is no limit to the age. There is no limit. Everyone is welcome. Um, so we're looking forward uh, to register. Please go to the official church website, uh, cgsc.org.au forward slash OJIC, which is One Jesus International Conference, and uh, register there and find the information you need. And for those who are here in this beautiful church, there is a flyer, a poster with a QR code on it. You can um, scan it, and then it'll take you to the page, and you can read more about, about it. Otherwise, you can speak to one of the youth group committee members uh, to find out more information about the One Jesus International Conference in 2025. I'm really looking forward to it if I'm still around. <laughs> uh, I, may be, I don't know if the Lord wants to take me, I don't know. Can I tell you a secret? I've been asking the Lord to take me. Yeah, I've been asking the Lord. But then again, I say, look, let it be your, your will, Lord, not mine. But I, I miss you dearly, Lord. Um, my time for me is over in this world. I don't see this world. I don't want to be in this world, not for any reason. It's just I miss you, Lord, and I want to be with you. Then again, when I go there, I'm going to miss you here. And if I stay here, I miss the Lord. So who comes first? The Lord Jesus, obviously. But when I'm there, I'll be praying for you. Um, and I'll come in your dreams and say, boo. <laughs> Just kidding. You have no idea how much I love you. You have no idea. Uh, only the Lord knows. I, um, all I can say, I love you this much. I cannot live without you people. I cannot. I love you this much. I cannot live without you. Um, for me, you're my family. You're my everything. And I, I, don't, I don't really care what's your background, what church you come from, or which church you go to. It doesn't matter. Like you're my family. I pray the Lord always to protect you, to give you good health and good spirit, to lead you, to shine upon you, and give you the discernment to realize what is His will in your life. May the Lord bless you abundantly. May the Lord enlighten your life more than ever before. May the Lord grant you your wishes and beyond what you're asking for with infinite with infinite blessings from above. May the Lord be with you always. And may the Lord at the end, after a long life on earth, may the Lord give you the best of the best in his kingdom. And may the Lord make me your servant in his kingdom. I love you to death. And remember this, our life on earth is only short. So let us make the most of it. Let us be close to the Lord Jesus. Let us be one family, truly one family in the love of Christ. And let us serve the Lord wholeheartedly. Let our aim be for the name of Jesus Christ to be glorified <clears throat> on a global level. Glorified 
in our families, glorified in our neighborhood, glorified in our community, glorified in our city, in our country, and globally as well. May Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who lives forever, live in every heart and shine upon every heart, enlighten every soul, every mind, every, every being. May the whole world come back to Jesus Christ of Nazareth. May all Christians come wholeheartedly and bow and serve the Lord from the heart. All glory to be given to Jesus Christ of Nazareth because this is the truth. He is the only one that must be glorified, must be honored, must be thanked, must be praised, and must be worshipped. For He is God revealed in the flesh, creator of everyone, visible and invisible, of everything, visible and invisible. He is the love of existence. He is existence itself. He is the way, the truth, and the life, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the morning star and the evening sacrifice. He is the Almighty who can do and create out of nothing everything, and out of everything He can turn into nothing. He is the life and the resurrection. Jesus, we love you, we adore you, we worship you, we thank you for being you. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Go, Jesus, baby. That was Aussie. And let's put the prawns on the barbie. All right, let's stand for the finale prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. This prayer is of St. Francis of Assisi. Now, St. Francis, to some people, is Catholic. Who cares? It's a beautiful prayer. I'm Orthodox, but I'm praying this. He's a saint. And what a beautiful words. We ask for his intercession. May the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth bless you, guide you, protect you, and deliver you from the snares of the enemy, whether it be visible or invisible. May you go in peace. May the peace of Christ be with you always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. See you next time. See you next Friday. And please look after the lawn. <laughs> God bless you. standing here before you knowing you are in control resting in your heavenly glory let your will be done for me I cast my burdens on to you, Lord, knowing you will take them all. I'm trusting in your blood you shed for me. I know you've called.
darkest days you're with me yeah you have always been my strength I cast my burdens on to you Lord and knowing you Trusting in your blood you shed for me I know you've covered all my sins I'm standing here in victory Knowing you have done it all Your deserving of the glory Let us praise your holy name Worshiping your 